Mutation is a change in the nucleotide sequence of an organism's DNA. Mutations provide the allelic variation and are responsible for the huge diversity of genes found among organisms. If mutation occurs in the reproductive cells, it can be passed from parents to offspring and to the future generations. Change in the structure of DNA leads to a change in the sequence of bases in the mRNA which leads to the change in the amino sequence of polypeptide and a change in the function of the protein. The effects of mutation it can be beneficial, neutral or detrimental. Neutral mutation has no detectable effect on protein function or no detectable effect on the survival of the organisms. As for the positive side of mutations, is that it can uh, it is essential to the to the continuity of life mutation provide the variation that enables species to change and adapt to the environment mutation also provides the foundation for evolutionary change on the other hand the negative side of mutation is that it can be harmful random mutation are likely to disrupt the expression of genes many inherited human diseases results from mutated genes Large-scale mutations and small-scale mutations. For large-scale mutations, it includes chromosome mutation. Chromosome mutations involves changes in the number of chromosomes or changes to large section of chromosome. Small-scale mutations of one or a few nucleotide pairs, including point mutation. Point mutation involves changes in a single nucle nucleotide pair of a gene Two categories of point mutations within a gene are number one, single nucleotide pair substitutions, number two, nucleotide pair insertions or deletions. For the first type of small scale mutation, which is nucleotide pair substitution, it involves the replacement of one nucleotide and its partner with another pair of nucleotides. This leads to three types of mutation, which is number one is silent mutation, number two is missense mutation, and number three is nonsense mutation. For the second type of small scale mutation, which is nucleotide pair insertions or deletions, this involves the addition, which is insertion or losses or deletion of nucleotide pairs in a gene that may alter the reading frame of the genetic message, which is the codon, on the mRNA during translation. So when it alters the reading frame of the genetic message, this can lead to the production of different protein with different function. So uh, nucleotide pair insertion or deletion will lead to frame shift mutation. For silent mutation, it involves a change in the nucleotide pair that changes one codon into another codon that is translated into the same amino acid. For silent mutation, it has no observable effects on the phenotype. For example, the DNA template of the wild type, it reads CCG. So, we write here, DNA template 3 prime CCG 5 prime. And during transcription, it produces the mRNA that has the codon that reads 5 prime G G C 3 prime. Okay, and during translation, it produces the amino acid glycine. But if nucleotide pair substitution occurs and changes the third base here from guanine to adenine, so the mRNA produced uh, due to the mutation, it will read 3 prime CCA 5 prime. Okay, instead of G, it, it is substituted with A. So during transcription, it produces mRNA with the codon that reads 5 prime GG U 3 prime and during translation it still produces the same amino acid which is glycine okay so this occurs because silent mutation usually occurs uh, 
that involve the third base, the change in the third base within the codon. So when the third base is changed within the codon, it's still specified or is still good for the same amino acid during translation. So this is because of the redundancy in the genetic code where some amino acid are specified by more than one codon. If you look back uh, or refer back to your um, codon table for mRNA, actually glycine is coded by four codons. Okay, four codons. Glycine are coded by four codons which are GGU, GGC, GGA, and G, G, G. Okay, so as you can see, the, the difference between the four codons of glycine is on the third base. So if you change the third base to either, uh, either basis, okay, it's still good for the same amino acid. So this is silent mutation. For missense mutation, it involves a nucleotide pair substitution that results in a codon that codes for a different amino acid. For example, the DNA template strand of the wild type that reads CCG, okay, so 3 prime CCG, 5 prime on the DNA template produces mRNA codon during transcription that reads 5 prime GGC. Okay, uh, during translation, it codes for the amino acid glycine. But if nucleotide pair substitution were to occur and changes the first best pair of the codon from cytosine to thymine, so the DNA template will read 3' prime instead of cytosine, it changes to thymine, and then the second base and the third base maintains the same. So it produces uh, mRNA codon which reads 5 prime, adenine, guanine, cytosine, 3 prime. Okay, so this mRNA codon will code for the amino acid during translation, which is serine. So for missense mutation, it involves a change in the codon that codes for a different amino acid. For missense mutation, it may involve the alteration of a single amino acid in a crucial area of a protein that can significantly alter the protein activity, such as uh, in the active site of an enzyme. So this may alter the enzyme structure and also function. But missense mutation can also have a little effect on the protein produced. For example, if the new amino acid have similar properties to the amino acid uh, it replaces, it may have a little effects on the protein uh, function. Or the new amino acid may be in a region of the protein that is not essential to the protein's function. So this also have a little effects on the protein produced. For nonsense mutation, it is a mutation that changes an amino acid codon to a stop codon. So this results in a shorter and usually non-functional protein. Nonsense mutation causes translation to be terminated prematurely, which results in a shorter polypeptide. So as you can see from this diagram here, the wild type DNA will produce mRNA that is used during translation to produce polypeptide chain uh, with um, methionine, lysine, phenylalanine, and also glycine. But if uh, nonsense mutation were to occur and changes the second uh, mRNA codon from uh, AAG to UAG, so this, it codes for stop codon and terminated the process of translation. Basically, there are three types of uh, stop codon, which is UAA, U, A, G, and also U, G, A. Nucleotide pair insertion or deletions can lead to frame shift mutation. Frame shift mutation occurs when nucleotides that are not in multiple of trees are inserted or deleted from a gene. 
frame shift mutation results in, in the altered reading frame of the genetic message due to improper grouping of the subsequent nucleotides into codon. For example, here, as you can see, it involves an extra nucleotide pair insertion. So this insertion will lead to immediate nonsense because instead of uh, coding for uh, a, a sequence of amino acid, it, uh, it codes for a stop codon that stop or terminate the process of translation. For the second example here, as you can see, it involves one nucleotide pair deletion. Okay. So this will lead to extensive missense. So it means that from this uh, on from this point onwards, so the amino acid sequence produced for the polypeptide will be altered and disrupt the protein function. Basically, as you know, N M R N A codon consists of three nucleotides, triplets of nucleotide. And each of the codon will code for an amino acid. If mutation were to occur and involves a 3 nucleotide pair deletion or a 3 nucleotide pair insertion, this will lead to no frame shift mutation. For example, as you can see from this diagram, so this is the DNA sequence uh, of the wild type the mRNA sequence and the, amino acid, uh, and the amino acid sequence produced for the polypeptide. So if three nucleotide pair deletion were to occur and deleted the, the sequence TTC and the mRNA codon uh, AAG will be missing, so during translation, uh, the amino acid lysine will be missing from the polypeptide chain. Same goes to if uh, three nucleotide pair insertion were to, to, were to be added to the sequence. For example, you add another GGC. So during translation, you will, uh, you will add another glycine to the polypeptide chain. Chromosome mutations. Large scale chromosomal alterations can affect an organism's phenotype. Error in myosis or damaging agents such as radiation can cause breakage of a chromosome which leads to four types of changes in chromosome structure such as deletion, duplication, inversion, and translocation. Alterations of chromosome structure. The first one involves deletion. Deletion is basically a deficiency in a chromosome resulting from the loss of a fragment through breakage. The affected chromosome is then be missing certain genes. For example, in this diagram, the chromosomal segment labeled as D is missing from the chromosome. So this is the resulting chromosome will be shorter and missing some genes. Second is duplication. Duplication of a portion of a chromosome results from fusion with a fragment of a homologous chromosome. For example, in this diagram, so this is the original chromosome. Uh, the segment labeled as B and C is being duplicated. Basically, deletion and duplication are likely to occur during meiosis. The third alteration of chromosome structure is inversion. Inversion is resulting from reattachment of a chromosomal fragment in a reverse orientation to the original chromosome. From this diagram, as you can see, the sequence of the chromosome segment is inverted. From CBD, it becomes DCB. The fourth type of alteration of chromosome structure is translocation. A translocation moves a segment from one chromosome to another non-homologous chromosome. As you can see from this diagram, there are two uh, chromosomes here that are non-homologous. So these two chromosomes will exchange segment uh, with one another. So this is translocation. Basically, inversion and translocation can alter uh, the phenotype of an organism because a gene's expression can be influenced by its location amongst the neighboring genes, which can have a devastating effects.
Alterations of chromosome number and structure are associated with a number of serious human disorders. Down syndrome, Kenefalter syndrome and Turner syndrome are due to alterations of chromosome number. As for Cryduchat and chronic myelogenous leukemia, which is a type of cancer, is due to the alterations of chromosome structure. The first example of genetic disease is Down syndrome. Down syndrome is also called as trisomy 21. Down syndrome is the result of an extra chromosome 21. As you can see from this uh, diagram, chromosome 21 has three chromosomes. So each body cell has a total of 47 chromosomes instead of the normal 46 chromosome. The cells are trisomic for chromosome 21. Features of Down syndrome individuals are they have characteristic facial features, slanted eyes, short neck, short stature, small head and eyes, large tongue, heart defects, susceptibility to developmental delays. They are also prone to develop leukemia and also Alzheimer's disease. On average, they have a shorter lifespan than normal and they are mostly sexually underdeveloped and sterile. Kenefalter syndrome is a type of syndrome that is due to aneuploidy of sex chromosomes. Another example of a disease that is due to aneuploidy of sex chromosome is Turner syndrome. Basically, Kenefalter syndrome is a type of disorder where a male has an extra X chromosome producing XXY. Kenefalter syndrome occurs in every 2000 live birth. So the person is a male uh, and they have male sex organ, but the testes are abnormally small. So the male is sterile. The X chromosome is basically inactivated, but has some breast enlargement and other female body characteristics. And as for the Turner syndrome, so uh, they are basically monosomy X. So they are XO individuals with female phenotype. They are sterile because their sex organs do not mature. Uh, they have normal intelligence. When, provi uh, when provided with uh, estrogen replacement therapy, they will develop female secondary sex characteristics. Disorder caused by altered chromosome structure. Credit Cryduchat results from a specific deletion in chromosome 5. So this is chromosome 5, so it experienced deletion. This is the, the deleted segment or region. So the child born with this uh, deletion is severely intellectually disabled. So the child will have a small head with unusual facial uh, feature. So the child has a cry that sounds like the meowing of a distressed cat. So the child uh, will have the tendency to die uh, in early childhood. So chronic uh, myelogenous leukemia or CML is another disease that is caused by the altered chromosome structure. So CML uh, occurs in cells that will become white blood cells. So this is due to the reciprocal translocation involving the exchange of a large portion of chromosome 22 with a small fragment from a tip of chromosome 9. So this produces Philadelphia chromosome or shortened chromosome 22. So this exchange will cause cancer by activating gene that lead to uncontrolled cell cycle progression. Population genetics is the study of genetic variability within a population. Some of the commonly used terms in this subtopic includes gene pool, which is all alleles at every locus in all members of sexually reproducing individuals in the population. Allele frequency, it's the proportion of specific allele in a population. Genotype frequency, is the proportion of individuals with a specific genotype in a population. Phenotype frequency is the proportion of a particular phenotype in a population.
if in a population, each genotype corresponds to a specific phenotype, then the phenotype and the genotype frequencies would be the same. The concept in population genetics is that the frequencies of alleles and genotypes does not change from generation to generation unless there is influence by outside factors. So a population with allele and genotype frequencies that does not change over time is said to be in genetic equilibrium. Genetic equilibrium is no net change in allele or genotype frequencies from generation to generation. Now, this basically means that the population is not undergoing any evolutionary change. The Hardy-Weinberg principle is essential to understand evolutionary change in a population. It relates the allele frequency and genotype frequency within a population. Now, this enables us to predict whether a population is evolving by comparing the allele frequency and genotype frequency in succeeding generations. So according to the Hardy-Weinberg principle, if the population is large, the process of inheritance would not cause changes in the allele frequencies. But if these frequencies deviate or differ from the values obtained by the Hardy-Weinberg principle, then the population is evolving or undergoing evolutionary change. The Hardy-Weinberg principle predicts an equilibrium. For a population to be in equilibrium, certain conditions have to be met. And these conditions include population size, mating, mutation, migration, as well as natural selection. According to the Hardy-Weinberg principle, the population must be large because in a large population, the allele frequencies is more stable, which means that it is less likely to change. Mating must be random, that each individual has an equal chance of mating with any individual of the opposite sex. And there is no mutation because new mutation that occurs in the gene of interest can change the allele frequencies. And there must be no migration because any immigration or emigration between different populations can change allele frequencies due to exchange of alleles in other populations. And there must not be natural selection because selection of favored heritable traits that occurs during natural selection would change allele frequencies because certain phenotypes would be favored over others. The Hardy-Weinberg equation is a simple mathematical expression. Since only two alleles exist at the locus, the sum of allele frequencies must always equal 1. In a simple binomial equation of P plus Q equals 1, P is the frequency of dominant allele in a population and Q is the frequency of recessive alleles. Expansion of this equation gives p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1, where q squared is the frequency of homozygous dominant individuals in a population, 2pq is the frequency of heterozygous individuals, and q squared is the frequency of homozygous recessive individuals. In this slide, let us consider a situation where a gene exists as two different alleles, capital A and small a. From the equation, P equals the allele frequency of capital A 
and Q equals the L frequency of small a. If the population is in hardy weinberg equilibrium and given P equals 0 0.8 and Q equals 0 0.2, then the genotype frequency for homozygous dominant individuals, heterozygous individuals, and homozygous recessive individuals can be calculated. In another example, cystic fibrosis is a recessive autosomal trait. In certain Caucasian populations, the number of people born with this disorder is 1 in 2,500. Assuming hardy weinberg equilibrium for this trait, calculate the frequencies for normal and cystic fibrosis alleles. Now, because what is given here, 1 in 2,500 is the genotype, so you will need to use the equation which is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. So now, Q squared equals 0, 1 over 2,500, which is 0 0.00. .00 4. From there, we will square root the Q and get 0 0.2, which is Q. Once you have Q, you can start using the first equation of P plus Q equals 1, and there you can get the value of P. So once you have both values of P and Q, you can start to calculate the genotype frequencies for homozygous dominant, heterozygous, as well as homozygous recessive individuals. The Hardy-Weinberg principle, along with its equation, allows biologists to calculate allele frequencies of a given population if we know the genotype frequency or vice versa. And it also allows us to predict whether a population is evolving, that is undergoing evolutionary change, by observing the allele frequency and genotype frequency in succeeding generations. Hello everyone, I am Hanisa. Together with Shakirin, we compiled the videos for Chapter 1. Hope that it would ease your learning experience in this new setting.